worldwide. Hello everyone, I'm TG and welcome back to the House of Sleaze. I have been playing the shit out of Ghost of Tsushima Legends over the past few weeks. And oh my god, did we not deserve this game. Because Sucker Punch has released it completely free if you own Ghost of Tsushima. And my god, there's so much content and it's just so much damn fun. So if you're on the fence about buying Ghost of Tsushima, as if anyone hasn't bought it already, I want you to go ahead and buy it. Because this game alone is worth it. So what I want to do over the next couple weeks is kind of go over each class and just let you guys know what to expect for the first 5 to 10 levels whenever you're playing as them. Now there's four classes that you get to choose from. Today's video I want to focus on the hunter because the hunter in pretty much any game is the character that I gravitate towards, probably because I'm a giant coward and I like to fight from a distance. So if that seems like your cup of chai, place your hand in mine and we'll begin together your journey as a hunter. Now, Hunter's an interesting character because she's the only one of the four classes that primarily focuses on ranged combat as opposed to melee. And that's not to say melee is not important, because it is for every character. Now on the subject of melee, when it comes to the Hunter and really any of the four classes, you're gonna want to start with the Water Katana. And the reason for that is the Water Katana is great across the board against any enemy with the exception of spear enemies. It obviously breaks the defense of shield enemies, but it also stuns brutes, and it does big damage to sword enemies. So Water Stance is really gonna be what you want to use throughout the whole game, but especially whenever you're starting out. It's a great choice for hunters because what you want to do is break the enemy's posture and get out of there as soon as you can so you can focus on doing some ranged damage. Now when it comes to ranged, the hunters have a unique weapon, the longbow. So this is basically a better shortbow. A lot of the times longbows are going to roll with a lot of draw speed and that means you're going to be able to fire your arrows off faster and one of the perks you can also get is shield piercing or helmet piercing ammo which means you don't have to worry about guys with shields because you can just aim at them like normal and cut through them like butter. Another interesting thing about the longbow is you can actually roll versatile on it as well and what versatile does is give that longbow the ability to be used by any class. The next piece of equipment you really want to keep your eyes out for is your hunter specific charm. So starting off the bat you're not going to be able to get a hunter charm so the best thing you can really hope for is either a defensive charm or a ranged charm. A defensive charm is great when starting out because it's going to give you things like injured resolve gain and damage reduction. So until you can get a hunter specific charm which is going to give you access to all kinds of fun abilities that we will get into later, defensive charm is a pretty safe bet. But if you happen to be able to pick up a ranged charm, that's great as well, because that is going to increase all your abilities when it comes to range. So you're going to see things like draw speed on that, range damage, and range resolve gain. Now lastly and most importantly when dealing with your equipment are your ghost weapons. So for your first slot, it's really no contest whenever it comes to the hunter. You want the sticky bomb. And the reason you want the sticky bomb is because it acts as a AOE stun for everyone around you, it gives you a chance to escape, gives you a chance to get headshots, gives you a chance to do whatever the fuck you want. For your next slot, until you really get the hang of things, and how everything works, and just how different survival is than the single player story mode, you're probably going to want to use the healing gourd. Now what the healing gourd does is you pop it and it heals you. Very self-explanatory. So it's really good to have early on whenever you're not really sure of what to do, but a little bit later on, whenever you've been playing for a bit, you're going to see that the caltrops are invaluable as a hunter. And the reason for that is because the caltrops, you drop them, and it slows down the enemies around you, it gives you a chance to get the fuck out of there. And that's really important whenever you're playing the hunter. You don't want to be in the fray so much, unless you absolutely have to. But if you check out some of the perks that you can roll on the caltrops, you start to see fun things like being able to weaken enemies whenever you drop them, and being able to set them on fire. Now fire is very, very important for a hunter, because fire hunter builds are popping up all over the place, because they just do so much damn damage. The hunter actually has an ability that increases fire damage built in to their tech tree. But don't forget, there is no set way to play any class in the game. You gotta use the ghost weapons that you feel help you the most, 
and complement your play style. So now for the fun stuff, let's take a look at some of the techniques that you're going to run into in the first few levels of playing as the hunter. First and foremost, the hunter's ultimate ability is Ai of Uchitsun, and this is probably the best ultimate in the game, because unlike the other ultimates, with the exception of Ronin, because that's a whole different thing, Ai of Uchitsun shoots five targets immediately. You don't have to get to them like you do as the assassin, and you have a little bit more control over them because it's always going to be the closest enemies to you, so it's a little bit better in that sense than the Samurais. And while playing on Bronze and Silver and really even up through Gold, Ivy Shutsun is going to one-shot any enemy it hits with the exception of Brutes and those filthy Oni that you will be seeing a little bit later on. Her next technique is her class ability, Staggering Arrow. So what Staggering Arrow does is you shoot it, and it staggers any enemy in an AoE for close to 5 to 10 seconds. Now this is really important because you can use this to escape, you can use this to line up your headshots, and you can use this to save another player whenever they're under attack. So depending on how you spec later on, you can actually make a whole build for the hunter based more around utility than really just around fire damage. Next, we get into her perks. So the first of her perks is Executioner, and what this does is increase headshot damage by 50% for enemies that are within 12 meters. So if you remember what I said about Staggering Arrow for lining up headshots, this is what I'm talking about. A lot of the times you can solo defend a point by shooting a Staggering Arrow and getting in real close and hitting them with headshots. And the more you play, the better your aim is inevitably going to get, or you could use the aim assist, but I do not advise doing that. This is a really great little tool for early on to help you learn how important it is to aim for the head. Her next perk is Resupply. So Resupply is something that you're probably only going to use until you get the next tier. And it's pretty good for early on whenever you're, again, just getting into the Hunter and you're not really sure how to manage your ammo great. Because what it does is it refills 30% of all your ammo, including fire arrows, and later on you get shield piercing arrows at the cost of one resolve. So it's definitely not the best perk in this tree, but it has definitely helped me out whenever I first started playing the game because I was complete shit at managing my ammo. Now the last perk that the hunter has is probably my favorite. I still use this to this day with my 110 key fire damage build. Pinpoint makes it so 50% of the time when you hit an enemy anywhere but the head, it counts as a headshot, and there is a lot of interesting information when it comes to this ability. For example, when you're looking at your perks and you roll headshot refund, if you're using pinpoint and a body shot counts as a headshot, that triggers headshot refund. So why are things like this important? Because later on, whenever you're finally making your perfect build the way you want it and there's all these variables, you're going to have a lot of questions. Namely, does this stack with this? And the great thing about this game is the answer is almost always yes. For example, later on you're going to run into, if you're lucky, a beautiful little legendary bow called the Skipping Stone Bow. Now what this bow does is every time you get a headshot, that headshot ricochets. So if you're hitting an enemy in the chest and it counts as a headshot using this perk, that shot will then ricochet. So everything like that meshes together and stacks. So get out there and roll with that synergy, baby. So that was my quick look at what you guys should expect whenever you're rolling a hunter to start with. And take it from me. If you're playing the hunter and you're at level 5 to 10 and you're thinking, wow, range damage, it just seems like a novelty. This is not paying off at all. I might as well just go melee. Check that at the door. Stick with it. Because soon, you're going to see that the hunter's damage is unmatched. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it helped you just a little bit, and I hope if you are on the fence about getting this game, this pushes you right on the other fucking side. I want to see some hunters out there, and I want to know down below what your perfect hunter build is. Happy hunting. And as always, I'm TG, if you like what you saw, you know what to do, if not, eh. And don't forget, if you like these videos and you want to see more, check me out on Instagram and Twitter for daily updates and general fuckery. Keep it sleazy.